Welcome to another episode of Grizzly Books True Crime. My name is Gisela Kay, and today we're going to be looking at some missing persons cases that are found on the Doe Network in Arizona, the same sort of area where Daniel Robinson disappeared from. Now, a lot of these people's cars and clothing were found in a similar way, so I find that very interesting. It's very strange. We'll have a look at it. Um, so let's get started with that. Thank you so much for joining me. If you like my lipstick today <laughs> and my bracelets, then thank you to Jill, um, a grizzly supporter, for sending such wonderful packages. If you want to see the unboxing of some of the parcels that I receive, or all of them really, I do that on TikTok and I do it on Instagram as well. Instagram is grizzly underscore books and TikTok, I believe, is grizzly books. Uh, let me just have a double check. Uh, thank you so much to everyone who also has helped me to pay for the exorbitant customs import taxes that the Netherlands charges me to receive packages from the US even though they declared as gifts even though they're under the value of 45 dollars or euros right they still punish me for receiving packages from the US so that sucks let's just quickly have a look yeah it's grizzly books on TikTok as well okay so today we're going to be looking at Arizona because you see this area here, I just mapped out just, you know, this area here where people went missing in recent years. And there's, there's quite a few in this area. Now, as you know, I've been actively covering the Daniel Robinson case. And Daniel Robinson went missing under very suspicious circumstances around here, um, Sun Valley Parkway, Buckeye, Arizona, Sun Valley Parkway and Cactus Road. West Cactus Road. Thank you to everyone who has signed the petition. Um, please help find Daniel.com. The petition is there. The GoFundMe is linked to that. So if you can go over there, if you haven't yet, that would be amazing. Daniel's father, David Robinson, has been on the show twice. Um, he'll be on again soon uh, with some updates or, you know, we keeping the coverage going on this case. And um, he needs a lot of support. So even encouraging messages and things like that would be very, very helpful. So I will link the previous videos at the end of this so that you can find those. And there I shared um, David Robinson's number. And in this video, in the description box, I've also shared um, the links to the petition. So let's have a look what I did here. Um, I'm just going to put the map off for a second because I want to show you. Um, I went to this Doe Network, right, dot org. So let's just quickly... Um, do this. So Jason Landry, we're going to look at that as well. But here on this, uh, this is Jelani Day updates. This Doe Network, this is Doe Network.org, and I looked under Arizona, right? So here, Arizona, Doe Network.org, and these are all the missing persons cases. They say male seventy two. Let's see, they don't say females. So. It's John, is it John Doe? Is that why? Doe Network. Look at that. Okay. There are only United States missing males. Geographical index. <laughs> don't know why they don't have women on here, but it's fine. I was looking at Arizona, right? So let's go to Arizona. And what I did was I just looked at the recent ones. I might have to move myself over. So I looked at um, this, this one, E. Risto. I looked at this one, this one, and this one, because 2021, August 21st, 2021, October 5th, 2018, April 7th, 2018, July 7th, uh, 27th, 2017, May 11th, 2013, and June 26th. This is now 2010. So even if we look at this one, these ones, um, sorry, I, I know you can't, sorry, you couldn't see that last one there. Hold on. My bad, got to make the window wider. <laughs> Sorry, move it over. There we go. So th this this one was from 2010, right? And there's, um, there's so many of them. It's so scary. 
we see all these missing people. No closure, no answers. But if we just look at, as you know, I've, I've written true crime books and I've studied serial killers uh, to write the books right, and there's always patterns. So am I saying that this is a serial killer case? I'm speculating so, but it might not be. It could also be gangs, gang-related stuff. Um, I don't know, but just the pattern of the dates is quite interesting because serial killers often have a cool-off period, some for a year, some for six months, some for a few weeks. It depends. you know. So the way that these missing people are all spaced out, and of course it's not completely up to date because, for instance, Daniel Robinson's name is not on here, and it, it really should be. So I opened each one of these, okay? So now if we, I don't know in which order now it is. There we go. Have to resize again. So if we look at this one. Ethan Benjamin Risto. Endangered missing person, August 21st, 2021, in Scottsdale, Maricopa County, Arizona. Date of birth, March the 30th, 1984, same month and year as me, 37 years old, race, white Caucasian, gender male, 5'8", 170 pounds, uh, hair color brown, short to shaved head or bald, eye color blue, and then nickname unknown, distinguishing marks unknown. Identifier, dentals not available, fingerprints not available, DNA available. Clothing and personal items. Can you see that? I just want to make sure. Last seen wearing green and black pants, black boots, no shirt and eyeglasses. Jewelry unknown, additional personal items, right? So now circumstances of disappearance. On Saturday, August 21st, 2021, at around 2000 hours, Ethan Risto was last reported seen in the desert area, East Shea Boulevard and Beeline Highway, near the border of Fountain Hills and Salt River, uh, Pima Maricopa Indian community, and has not been seen since. Ethan's vehicle was located abandoned in the area. See? That's similar to Daniel Robinson. Vehicle just abandoned. And then they say... The agency name is Salt River Police, and there's the detective's name and everything. Hey, so if you know something, if you see something, say something. So, if we look at the map again, not that one, that's the one of Jason Landry and Jelani Day, uh, East, that's the second one, wait. This is over here, you know, this. <laughs> Um, so that is over here where this man went missing on August 21st, 2021. Okay. And Daniel went missing over around here, right? So it's really not all that far apart, is it now? You know what I mean? Wow. I'm going to leave the map like this for now. If you want to know the distance, I mean, I'll probably open another map then. Do you want to know the distance? So, we'll go Sun Valley Parkway to East Aya Boulevard. It's 67 miles apart. Okay, 67 miles apart. That's those two. So now, if we go to the next one on this, uh, this Joe, oh, sorry, Doe Network, it is E. Orzoko. Is that how we say that? I hope so. Let's look at that one. Okay, so we've got Everardo Orozco, endangered missing, October 5th, 2018. He went missing. Last seen Nogales, Santa Cruz County, Arizona. Born October 10th, 1975. 43 years of age. 
Hispanic male, 5'11", 160 pounds, brown, medium length hair, eye color green, nickname Lalo, large scar on forearm, somewhat red in color, goatee or light facial hair. Okay, and then dentals are and fingerprints and DNA available. They say clothing and personal items, uh, clothing unknown, jewelry, gold chain, and additional personal items, wallet and cell phone. Everardo told his family that he was taking a shuttle from Tucson to Nogales to help a friend with a plumbing job. He talked to his mother on October 5th, 2018. So you can see he disappeared five days later. Oh, no, sorry. Oh, he talked to his mother on October 5th, 2018. Oh, yeah. No, that's when he's been missing from, since October the 5th, 2018. It was his birthday on October 10th. And told her that he was in Nogales and would be returning home the next day, but he never returned or has had any contact with family. Investigators suspect Everardo was involved in narcotic trafficking along with the people he's associated with and went to visit in Nogales. Furthermore, Everardo's family believe his disappearance may be cartel related. Now, where did I read this? Um, so this one, additional personal items, wallet and cell phone. I can't read on this one if they found that. There was one of these. So let's look at the next one. Sun City, Arizona. Here we've got John Louis Zawarucha. <laughs> Zawarucha. Endangered missing. That was July 27th, 2017 from Sun City, Maricopa County, um, Arizona. Born November 17th, 1960. 56 years old. White male, 5 foot 9, 165 pounds. Um, hair color is brown, graying long. Eye color brown. Distinguishing marks. Smoker usually wears hair in a ponytail and has depression. They say clothing usually wears cameo shorts. Okay, camo shorts. And then additional personal items. Painted pink, white, yellow rock depicting an angel on her way to heaven and Laura painted on top and the two dates on either sides. Circumstances of disappearance, right? John Zerucha was last seen on July 27, 2016 by his sister in Sun City, Arizona. He told his sister he was going hiking. Now that's sort of similar to Daniel to Daniel's case because he also last saw his sister he said the night before oh i've got an emergency and then he went to sit at the waffle house so that's interesting but anyway th this person said um he was going hiking okay it was his van was later found in the parking lot in sedona arizona near the vortex hills hiking trails john was an avid hiker he has hiked sedona hills and knew the area pretty well after the sudden deaths of both his fiance and his mother john fell into a deep depression and might have been Wanting to unalive himself at the time of his disappearance, a search of the area turned up no leads to John's whereabouts. On July 29th, John's stepfather, okay, so he went missing on July 27th, and on July 29th, John's stepfather received a large box in the mail containing everything John owned. A wallet, a license, a cell phone, a, the title to his van, and birth certificate. So in this case, perhaps John sent that box to his stepfather that's what it seems like however i'm just looking at his wallet his license his cell phone okay same as in daniel robinson's case his car was found and by the car was his wallet his cell phone his wallet was actually in his pants and his pants were not inside out they were just on the ground you know what i mean like just in a pile on the ground very close to the car with his boots in the desert Okay, um, and then let's look at this next one here. This one is Manuel Valentino Francisco Molina, endangered missing April 7, 2018, Catalina, Pima County, Arizona, 20 years old, okay, born February 14th, 1998, white male, 6 foot, 160 pounds. They're all around the same weight. Now that doesn't have to mean like, oh my word, but it is interesting. They're all around the same weight. Um... Daniel's father, David Robinson, said that a pile of clothes was found quite close to the water well where Daniel had last worked. Um, and those pants were much larger than Daniel's pants, so that was probably a heavier guy. So that's interesting as well. I mean, also please know that um, they have found, as in David Robinson and the search team, volunteers, while doing a grid search for Daniel Robinson, they have found at least seven other human remains and some other piles of clothing so that is weird okay so they say here hair color brown short 
eye color brown. Um, distinguishing marks, tattoos above the heart, Ashton, both arms, alchemy symbols, right leg calf, A in a circle, Cheshire cat on ribs and elbows are branded with a star. Dentals, fingerprints, and DNA is available. Clothing unknown, jewelry, blue diamond earrings, and additional personal items, iPhone 8 cell phone. Manuel was last seen in Catalina, Arizona on April 7th, 2018. Foul play is suspected. And then we just look at this one here. Missing since May 11th, 2013. Glendon Ray George, endangered missing. Page, Arizona, at Lake Powell. 38 years old. Date of birth is August 9th, 1975. Uh, race, native, gender, male, 5'5". Five five. See, 160 pounds. Hair color, black short. Eye color brown. There's a lot of similarities here. Do you see what I'm saying? It's not like one's green eye, blue eye, brown eye. They all got short brown hair or short black hair, and they are all around 160 pounds. It's so weird. Um, nickname is G Ray. Distinguishing marks: two inch long scar on the back of the head, scars on the nose. Nose was possibly broken, slightly crooked. One inch thin scar above the right eyebrow. Scars on the left side of the midsection of back. Multiple scars on the left wrist, three to four inch scar on the right quad from broken femur, walks with a limp, three, walks with limp, three inch pentagram tattooed on left arm, left ear pierced. Dentals not available, fingerprints not available, DNA not available. And they say circumstances of disappearance. He was last seen walking by Lake Powell in Page, Arizona on Mother's Day, May 11, 2013. He's from Bitter Springs, Arizona. Right, so we look at all of those. Interesting. And now if we also look at um, these for a second. So this um, Sun Valley Parkway and all those others we looked at, but especially Daniel Robinson went missing around there. And then, um, right, let me zoom out for you. Over here is where Jason Landry, his abandoned vehicle was found. Again, similar circumstances. And then Jelani Day in Peru. Again, his vehicle was found, pile of clothes found, wallet found, now his cell phone's been found, lanyard found. He was found in the Illinois River, unfortunately. Um, that's an ongoing investigation. Uh, but Jason Landry and Daniel Robinson, all of these cases right here, abandoned vehicles, clothing found. Missing persons? Very interesting. So, oh, let me just quickly do this one again. So if we look at this, based on all the cases uh, we just looked at, oh, sorry, in Arizona, try to make this a bit bigger for you. So there's Sun City, we've got Sun Valley Parkway, we've got Ishia Boulevard, we've got this Nogales one, that's the last place the guy said he was going and that he was going to return home. There's Tucson, um, I mean we don't know if he went back this way. And then there's also this one at Lake Powell, that was from 2013. So obviously know that this is obviously between 2013 and 2021. So it's not like this all happened in a week and it's too far apart, it's over years and it could all be linked it could be a cartel it could be a serial killer we don't know but it's scary to think about that and then um now what i want to show you let's put this over here okay so if we look at the the list of gangs in Phoenix, Arizona. I said list of gangs in Arizona, right? So this is what comes up. Those people are starting to suspect it could be something like that. I don't know. But here's a lot of gangs here. Yes, MS-13 is one of them that could be their hip-hop database. Well, list of gangs in Phoenix, Arizona. These are the most active ones, right? Look how many there are. Linda Park Kitchen Crips, Backstreet Crips. Rolling 40 Neighborhood Crips, 7th Avenue Neighborhood Crips, Park South Neighborhood Crips, West Side City, Townhouse Crips, Playboy Gangster Crips, Broadway Gangster South Side, 33rd Avenue Neighborhood Crips, 28th Avenue Gangster Crips, East Side 40 Crips, South Side Deuce Mob, WS79 Mad Swan Bloods, 
55th Avenue Bloods, 35th Avenue P, Block Crips and West Side Goonies, and the 53rd West Side Goon. All right. Um, so a lot of gangs there. And then. So just to show you this, um, that is a picture of Daniel Robinson. Still missing. His father's still searching. Human bones found in desert during search for the missing 24-year-old Arizona cops say. A search team has scoured the Arizona desert looking for a missing 24-year-old for months and they have found human remains. Family members, however, don't think the remains belong to their loved one. All right, today is uh, November 6th, Saturday morning. Uh, we came out here to the desert area where Daniel was last seen and where our searches have been continuing now for 14 weeks. Uh, my investigator partner and I had uh, an idea to run down an area that had not been searched. It was uh, further south, a couple miles south of the entrance road off a of cactus. And uh, you can see behind me, we did uh, identify, they were leg, uh, human leg bones, human femurs. Uh, we found a couple femurs and we found um, hip bone. Uh, at this point, the medical examiners confirmed it. And uh, we don't know whose it is, but uh, we'll, that'll be in the days to come. But for now, we have, CC Buckeye Police has taped off the scene and uh, we'll wait for further information. Okay, so that's David Robinson on the left, Daniel's father, and an investigator with him that's helping him out. Geologist Daniel Robinson left a job site on June 23rd, yes, 2021, and hasn't been seen or heard from since. The Buckeye Police Department in Arizona said Robinson didn't tell anyone where he was going or why he left. Okay, since his disappearance, officials said they have scoured more than 70 square miles. In July, they found his Jeep in a ravine with the airbags deployed. His cell phone, wallet, and other personal items were found in the Jeep, according to police. Well, his wallet was apparently found in his pants, right, according to his dad. Days later, they found a human skull. On July 31st, 2021, a human skull was located in an area south of where the Jeep had been recovered. Buckeye officials said in a September 16th news release, it was later determined the remains do not belong to Daniel. Since then, Robinson's family has continued searching for him. Search volunteers found human remains in the desert on Saturday, November 6th, near where Robinson was reported missing. My weekly searches for my son has again uncovered human remains out in the desert of Buckeye, Arizona, hopefully bringing some closure to another grieving family, his father David said on Twitter. The human remains is not Daniel. I will continue my searches for my son. So they found two femur bones, a vertebrae and sides of a pelvis uh, were discovered, according to Fox 10. The bones were sent to a medical examiner for identification. While local authorities have been searching for Robinson for months, his disappearance has not been getting more national attention. Oh, sorry. His disappearance has been getting more national attention recently. After officials said they found the remains of missing 22-year-old Gabby Petito, people on social media started drawing attention to Robinson's disappearance. I'm shaking. I'm shaking reading about the discovery of Gabby Petito's body in Wyoming, journalist Shayla Davis said. While we're watching this case unfold, please take five seconds to read about Daniel Robinson, a geologist who went missing in the desert outside Buckeye three months ago. His father's still looking for him. Robinson's father also told AZ family he was feeling a sudden movement for his son's search efforts after Petito's suspected remains were found. Police said Robinson is five feet eight inches and weighs 165 pounds. He has black hair and black eyes and he's missing his right hand and forearm. Wow. So, so that is, I know there were some articles that took this news of them discovering human remains and were like, oh, human remains were discovered. Could it be Daniel? But it, it wasn't. It was confirmed quite quickly that it wasn't Daniel. And of course, if he's missing his right hand and right forearm, it would be quite easy to identify if they did find skeletal remains that, okay, this is not Daniel. You know what I mean? So, because some people had questions of like, how do they know so quickly? So, um, I'm glad that this case is getting lots more attention, and I hope many, many more cases will. So, this is another one. Um, bodies of Colombian migrant and her daughter, 11, found in the Arizona desert. I'm just going to, let's focus. Okay. A Colombian woman and her 11-year-old daughter were found dead in an Arizona desert amid scorching temperatures last month abandoned by a human smuggler as they attempted to make the perilous crossing into the U.S. from Mexico. U.S. Customs and Border Protection said officers found the deceased mom and daughter and a second child who was still alive on August 25th, 
after responding to a 911 call. This was, whoa, 2021, man. Just had to make sure. Still alive. On August 25th, after responding to a 911 call about a family of three in distress. Okay. The mom was identified as Claudia Marcella Pena by Telemundo, which said it obtained her desperate call to authorities made moments before she apparently succumbed to the heat. Please help me. I'm going to pass out, Pena told the 911 operator. The woman and her children, including the surviving toddler boy, had been trying to reunite with her husband in the U.S. Family members said three were abandoned. The three were abandoned in the desert, where August temperatures reach highs of 102 degrees. By a coyote. What? The three were abandoned in the desert by a coyote or human smuggler. Who was taking them across the border. One of her children could be heard pleading, Mommy, I'm hungry in the background, the report said. The operator then sent um, Pena a WhatsApp message asking her to share her location. Her phone died a few minutes later. The Colombian Ministry of Foreign Relations confirmed the deaths of the mom and daughter and said their body showed no signs of violence. A two-year-old boy was found alive and was placed in the Center for Minors in California. The Office of Refugee Resettlement will keep the boy in its custody until he is placed with a relative, either in the U.S. or Colombia, authorities said. Okay. So... That, again, I just want to go to the beginning. Bodies of Colombian migrant, her daughter found in Arizona desert. Abandoned by a human smuggler. Okay. So, that story. They've got a, a migrant death mapping. A migrant death map in Arizona. Well, Daniel wasn't a migrant. Custom map of migrant mortality. What is going on there? Wow. Um, printable maps and posters. Let's look at the interactive map. Map tools. Map time. <laughs> Map of recently discovered deaths. Okay, if we look at this map right here. This is a map. There's Phoenix, Arizona. Tucson. Maricopa. And Lakes. Interesting. I'm just trying to gather here quickly where this is. Sun Valley Parkway. So right there by Phoenix, okay. Where was that? I'm just looking if there's anything listed here. Hmm. Arizona Proving Grounds, okay, looking, looking, it's around here. There's no one really identified here on this map for this migrant humane borders. But what? Not that far off from Phoenix, though. I don't know what's going on there. I don't want to make the video too long. <laughs> I can explore this all day, honestly, and just be like, what, 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 what? So is this one. Map of migrant mortality. Hmm. Okay. And then, there's these ones. to do one more thing so I just want to go over this Jason Landry story if it would just allow me I love it when it's like 
our European visitors are important to us. And I'm like, no, we're not, because I need a VPN to access some of that information. Missing person, Jason Landry. Luling, Lulling, Texas. Search crews are scheduled to return to Caldwell County on Saturday with newly derived maps to search for a missing Texas or a missing Texas State student from Missouri City. Officials say Jason Landry went missing on December 14th on Salt Flat Road outside of Lulling while he was heading home to the Houston area. The search teams will utilize canines, horse-mounted search crews, and people on foot. They're going to visit each of the areas of interest identified when the 21-year-old disappeared. A lot of aerial imagery has been taken from drones. That imagery has been processed through an artificial intelligence system to try to identify shapes and colors consistent with possible, with possibly a missing person. So far, there have been six major searches for Landry. The last search took place in February. Okay. So I want to just find out a little bit more. $10,000 reward is also now set up for Jason Landry. So the rear of his car and the front of his car were damaged. It's very similar to Daniel Robinson as well. Um, I just want to say... They say investigators believe Landry may have made a wrong turn as a result of faulty GPS and swerved off the road in the remote area where his car was found. Jason Landry's Nissan Altima was found crashed and abandoned on a road just outside of Lulling, Texas last Sunday night. That was what they reported, but it's, again, it's very interesting. Oh man, I'm sorry. I'm trying to access these really cool articles that I've seen before, but my VPN is not on right now. And so it won't let me look at the articles. <laughs> isn't it swell living in europe i actually do love europe it's just so many issues <laughs> getting american stuff anyway okay they're searching for him i just want to find the one where they con okay circumstances of jason It's like Jason Landry, Daniel Robinson, and Jelani Day's cases have a lot of similarities already. And then there's these other ones that I showed you today, which are on the Doe network. And I mean, I wonder if there's, there would be obviously more sites. Maybe we can see if there's some females missing under some similar circumstances. Wow. His, his car, the 21-year-old's car was found crashed with his wallet and phone inside. They're looking for patterns and shapes and colors that have been associated in the past of a missing person. Let's see if this will open. Oh, ABC, you're letting me open it, right? So the 21-year-old's car was found crashed with his wallet and phone inside about 900 feet away from the wreck. Investigators found clothing in a backpack. That's so similar to Daniel Robinson's case and Jelani Day, where his clothes found in one place in a pile and then his car in another. And then the phone's there, the wallet's there, everything. That doesn't make any sense. Um, but they're quite far apart, right? Did you see that? So one more time, just so you can get the picture map time. They're very far apart, these cases. But I mean, Ted Bundy traveled the entire country. You know what Ted Bundy did. If you don't, I wrote a whole book on it. <laughs> you can check that out on grizzly-books.com. The link is in the description box. But he went all over the country. So I wonder if there's any connection to these cases. Um, the other thing that all these cases have in common, I can't speak for all the ones I showed today, but many, majority of these cases involve um, marijuana. You know, the, they were consumers of marijuana, medical marijuana, which is not a problem. It's just that I don't know who's involved in selling it or lacing it with something or, you know, what is actually involved or is it drug cartels or is it people who want what they bought. I don't know. I don't know. It's just one of those, one pattern, one other pattern that's maybe worth mentioning. So let me know what you think in the comments below about this. I find it all very interesting. And a former undercover um, cop told me that he 
agrees with my thinking along the lines of um, Jelani Day's case being connected to what looks like it, it appears to be a serial killer MO type case. I'm not saying that these three are all definitely connected to that. It's just interesting patterns and definitely the circumstances under which Jelani Day disappeared and the circumstances under which his body was found. Very interesting. Then there's one more thing I want to show you here. I'm talking about Jelani Day. They say here, uh, three Tristone employees accused of having something to do with Jelani Day's death. Illinois State graduate student Jelani Day's death, or Jelani Day's cause of death, was officially ruled as drowning. He was an avid swimmer, though, and he wouldn't take off his clothes to go for a swim in the Illinois River after removing his own license plates. That's why there's a petition to sign for him, too, that his mother wants to get signed so that he could take it to the police and say, actually, like, you can't just say drowning and the case closed. It's probably foul play, and we've got to look into that. Um, so, said LaSalle County Coroner Richard Block, right? His last known whereabouts beyond Hello, a dispensary in Bloomington. Three employees of the former security service Tristone issued to so three employees of the former security service Tristone issued to Beyond Hello have received threatening messages that accuse them all of having something to do with Day's death. One former Tristone employee said he saw Day but tells cities he was not a frequent customer. This employee also tells cities uh, through the investigation police asked only if he had seen Day's car. Tristone did security until the end of September at Beyond Hello and have since hired on a new service, Outline Universal. Cities has reached out to Beyond Hello for comment about employee contact information protocols. This story is developing. This former employee of Tristone Security said he went to Beyond Hello to inquire about the release of his phone number. I asked, is there any way they could have gotten my number? He's like, if any of the employees know your first and last name, they can pull up your account. I asked if there was a record of who pulled up my account, and she said not that she was aware of. Uh, texts have been sent to this Tristone employee and three other texts. Texts that read, y'all had something to do with that guy, Jelani Day. That ish, coming back at y'all. Okay, I can't say all these words. You can see it there, right? Y'all definitely finna be exposed. You and did that to him. Right? You see that? That's what I'm reading here. They say, um, it's really weird. On a Thursday, around 10 p.m., I like it when I say 10 p.m. o'clock, <laughs> around 10 p.m., um, my wife was followed up to our local gas station by a dark-colored Mustang. They were sitting across the street. I was pulling into KC's. They uh, threw off pretty quick. I'm saying <gasps> KC's. I don't know. Brian Laundry stopped at a KC's. Remember that? I notified my police here about that too. Saturday, when I got home around 10 p.m., Someone was trying to get in our bedroom window, said the former Tristone employee. Beyond Hello had my number. I went and talked to them, and they removed my number out of the system. It's not just me, it's other employees who got these texts as well. Not as severe, but they got these text messages as well. This employee, whose name has been protected, said Detective Jones called and left a voicemail saying that one of the professors from Illinois State got some threatening messages too. Beyond Hello, they've got a lot of cameras in their store. They can verify I was working that very next day. I think the week he, Jelani Day, went missing, I was working 80 hours a week, said the former Tristone employee. If I get any more text messages, I'm supposed to contact the police again. They, the police, are trying to figure it out, everything that's been going on. The local PD, they don't have a lot of resources, I'm assuming. The police here are taking it very seriously. The first night that it happened, I walked outside to go take trash out, and there's a police vehicle a few blocks away, watching our property. This officer basically took it upon himself to make sure we are safe. Okay. And the last thing I want to say is that Jelani Day's phone has been found um, and his mom really wants the Bloomington police to give the phone to the FBI. Which makes sense. That, you know, let's hope that some more information will come out of that. Um, the 25-year-old graduate student was last seen August 24th. His mother, Carmen Bolden Day, is asking the FBI to take over the case. That's also what the petition is about. So it's in the link in my description box if you do want to go and sign the Jelani Day, Justice for Jelani Day link, um, the petition, sorry. Okay. They say, Carmen said, yes, the Bloomington police have in their possession 
the phone right, and I'm just wondering why they have it in their possession. They say a friend or acquaintance found it on the side of the road, turned it in at Walmart, they took it to the police. It's a really convoluted chain of custody. And Jelani Day's mother said, well, from what I understand, the gentleman was going down the interstate and a mattress fell off the back of his truck. He stopped his truck to secure the mattress back on the truck. He found a phone. He said that the phone had been shattered. He ended up taking it to a kiosk at a Walmart because he said that the phone didn't work. He took it to a kiosk at, at Walmart. He received $80 for the phone. He did this on October 17th. Today is November 11th. I found out about the phone, that the phone had been found and had been identified as Jelani's phone early this morning, maybe about one or two o'clock this morning. However, the young man had let me know that he got questioned two days ago. So the police have been aware of this. They've known about the phone. They have not made me aware. According to Peru in Bloomington, the FBI is assisting and providing resources. When I contacted them today, they told me that they didn't tell me about the phone because they wanted to be sure. They then told me that they were going to look into Jelani's phone to see what was on there. I questioned why they would go through the phone, and uh, she said to me, Carmen, if you don't want us to go through the phone, let me know now, and we'll turn it over to the FBI. And I told her that's what I would prefer to do. So if they can turn it over to the FBI and not mess with it, because at this point, I need the FBI involved. I need them to not provide oversight, not to be engaged, but to take over this case, right? So let's hope that that does happen. Anyway, that's uh, a lot of updates from me for now. I'll leave it at that for now. Let me know what you think um, in the comments below. If you like this kind of video where I'm covering, you know, these missing persons cases and trying to map a little bit of a pattern. When I see similarities and patterns, I'm like, hmm. Maybe a little bit of map time. Let's have a look at that. If it's even possible that it could be linked. Anything is possible. And I just hope that these families get the answers that they deserve. I hope that there's so many families, you know, so many worldwide that have missing loved ones. And to me, there's nothing worse than that because it's already bad to lose a loved one, but to have absolutely no answers and to think that we live in 2021 when we all have all this all cameras, phones, social media, there's cameras everywhere you drive as well. And it's just like your loved one can just disappear into thin air and under very suspicious circumstances in many of these cases. And that's just that. It's just like shrug and no, like it can't be. It just can't be. It really bothers me. <laughs> sure, it bothers you too, right? So if you like this video, thumbs up. If you are not yet subscribed, please do hit the subscribe button and the bell so that, or give it a hug. So that you can become an OG and original Grizzly. Join a great community of Grizzlies. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for all your support, your kind comments and everything. And if you do not check my community post, please go there as well. I believe that YouTube only allows notifications for a community post once every three days. So if I were to make a community post, for example, every day, you would only see one every three days that it notifies you I did one because of that restriction. Also, always make sure you check the homepage or the video page tab or my playlists on my channel because I often post quite a lot of videos on a day. I'm obviously doing this full time. I love what I do. And they do also only allow three notifications for videos per 24 hours on YouTube. So if you are subscribed to my channel and I make three videos right now, you will get those notifications. But if I make more videos beyond that, you won't get those. You won't even know about them. So you'll have to check the page. So just make sure that you do check my, my YouTube channel so that you can make sure you're not missing out on content that you like and that you want me to keep you updated on. Oftentimes when you guys email me and say, oh my word, could you, could you cover this and this and this? I already did. You just didn't get the notification. So check for those. Okay. Thank you so much for watching today. I will see you in the next one.